back to the channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Juana. I am the Crafty Pro Weekend. Today, I'm going to be working with some sewing and I'm going to try to include also some embroidery. Hopefully, this block is not going to run too long for me to do that. I'm going to be sewing some keychains or key fob made out of fabric and I wanted you to bring you in on the whole thing. Uh, for those who follow me, you know that I mentioned before that I'm getting ready for my first um, market sale it's gonna be at the end of august and i wanted to i wanted you to be part of this experience and yeah so if you're new to the channel and you like sewing and embroidery and other crafts you can go ahead and follow my channel the crafty pro weekend and yeah guys i can't wait to start so let's go at it okay so i am here um for this um project I'm gonna be cutting two pieces of fabric. This one right here is four inches in width. And I'm gonna be using this one for my one inch width um, hardware or key fob. The fob um, comes in different width. I chose to do one inch and 1.25. So for the one inch is four inches in width. You can do it any length you want. This one is a 17, close to 17 inches in length. I'm gonna be cutting different um, length. And then for the 1.25, you're going to cut a fabric that is going to be 5 inches in width. And this one is 15 inches in length. Like I said, I'm doing different kind of length. Um, I don't have the 1.25 inches by with me. I'm going to bring it up in a little bit. Um, yeah. So same thing is going to apply for the interfacing. I'm using Pellon um, Fusible. So it has glue on the other side. And you're going to cut the same width. If it's a little bit less right here, it doesn't matter because you're going to fold the fabric in. But, you know, you're going to want to um, cut it close to the uh, width of the same width of the fabric. So this is for the 5 inch and then this is for the 4 inch right here. Okay. Um, I cut a lot of them. This is not the one that belongs to this one. So, yeah. So those are the things that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using uh, also my um, clips right here. You can also use um, straight pins, but you don't have to have the clips to do that. And um, like I mentioned again, the fabric, the glue, and that's it. If you have not seen my first video when I was working on keychain with rhinestones, you can go back and see those. Um, for those one, I use a completely different material. So that's it, guys. So I'm going to continue um, with the whole process. Um, I'm going to get ready to start. So guys, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to iron this, the back of the fabric, wrong side together, and this side has the glue in it. This is not exactly on the same width, but that's okay because we're going to fold it and that way you don't get the glue on your mat. So... And then we're going to iron it. This one, they said not to um, place steam on it. So just the regular, the regular um, iron. So I'm going to take off the steam because this one was on steam before. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the steam. Okay. The steam prevents the glue to melt. Uh, it waters down the glue on the other side. That's why you don't need the steam. Okay. You give it a good press, and then you're going to fold that in half. A lot of people um, do it exactly in the middle. Like, for example, you know that this is, um, um, this fabric is 5 inches wide, and they do like 2.5. I just do it, um, eyeball it. You can, you can do it. You can measure 2.5 and then mark with a pen and then fold it. But I think that, you know, if you um, know exactly that you have the correct measure, I don't think you need to mark it. But if you're new sewing, then go ahead and mark the middle and then you fold it. Like I said, I don't, I don't, I don't mark it. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut these edges. They're driving me crazy. I am. 
um, it's a pity, but I don't like to have this extras. I have to do a better job cutting. You don't want to cut too much because remember you have the perfect measurement for the hardware. So be careful when you do this. All right? You don't want to mess up the measurements. Where is my trash can? I'm just hiding all the way back here. Put it here. Okay, let me get rid of this. I placed the table close to a window. Today is so pretty today. I wanted to see the outside. So that's why you see a little bit more of a lighter um, kind of video because I'm literally... I'm literally on front of the window. I'm just cutting the excess people. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and iron this. And this is the wider um, keychain. This is a two, um, the one point two five hardware measured um, measured. So um, I'm, this is a five inches in width of the fabric. All right. This is a clapper, we call it a clapper. It gets your seam still flat right after you iron. So once you do this, what you're gonna do, this is a little thing here. This is a new iron um, and it's on. But I don't see the light on. Hopefully it's working. Feels very hot. I like that because I can stand it this way and I don't need to have a area to place it. It just stands like this. It just stands like this. <laughs> Let me see if you're in view. I'm talking, I don't even know if you're in view. Yeah, it stands like this. That's why I liked it. I like it, yeah, it's on. All right, so now once you have it here, like I said, some people use a um, marker, clothing marker, whatever you call it, that it disappears with the heat or the air and they mark in the middle to me, it's very obvious that this is the line. I don't need to do this. Again, if you feel more comfortable marking with a ruler the line of the middle and then that serve you as a guide to put it like this, it's up to you. You don't have to do that, okay? Um, I'm going to now fold the first part in like this. And then you're going to iron that, okay? So I'm going to use my clips to make sure that it's in place. Once I finish this demonstration, you're going to see me working on them. Um, I only um, cut ahead of time the one that I show you so that, um, you know, I can have an, so that I can do the video, but I have more fabric, different colors that I'm going to be working on. Yeah. Okay. So you do, you do this like this, all right? And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Right? So let's iron this part first.
I'm doing all of this i'm assuming you guys are in view i think you are in view of everything that i'm doing okay so this is done and then we're gonna do the same thing with the other side okay we'll do the same thing on this side i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna clip it use this clip they call it um i think quilters clips or you know they have different names i call them clips and this is a very basic way of doing it there are so many if you go to youtube there's so many videos um how to do this some people um use batting instead of this like fusible batting and then they sew across to give you the quilting um like a quilt look you can do that as well so let's do this part make sure that you don't overlap you want to be right on the middle don't overlap it okay you see how flat does the clapper keep it if you don't use a clapper this tends to open once you iron no matter how much you iron it just tends to open up more into the middle part here i'll fix this part because it's a little bit too out there that's better okay if you're interested on this it's kind of a heavy piece of wood i got it from amazon and i got it on a set of two it came to all in the set and they are not expensive i think I would say, I don't want to quote a price because there's so many of them and I don't remember the exact price of this set. It wasn't, it was less than $20, maybe $18.99, $69. I don't remember. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead now that you had this like this. You're going to go ahead and you're going to fold it in half again. Like this. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to use your clips. There you go. Okay. And then I'm going to repeat the same thing. I'm going to iron it. Has so many shirts to embroider and I don't even know how to start and when to start because I'm lately kind of been lazy not lazy just tired um a lot of embroidery that I need to do you're gonna iron this like this make sure that they are all meeting together you don't want to um you know miss the spot in here And you're going to repeat the same thing in here. Same thing. Okay. Alright, so this is the first part. Now, once you have it in here, make sure that all the corners or all the um, parts are meeting together. Don't worry if this is a little bit longer than this because this is going to go under the hardware. So I'm not too concerned about that, but this is the way it's supposed to look. And now what we're going to do is we're going to move to the sewing machine and we're going to sew right here all along. I'm going to be using two inches in length of the stitch to do. Do I have it set up to 2.5? I think it's two inches. You're going to go along here. You're going to go along here. 
okay so I'm gonna continue preparing the other ones. Let me see if I can find it. I bring my hardware so I can show you. Yeah, I have the hardware in here. So this is the 1.25 hardware, and this is the one that's gonna go in here. Okay, like this. All right. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm going to continue ironing the other ones, and I will meet you. At the sewing machine um i have the other ones in here and i prepared different length because i wasn't sure exactly what the length that i wanted this is a 17 inches one let me be corrected yeah 17 inch i think i did a 12 inch because i want to know um how shorter and how longer i want to have it so yeah okay <music> yesterday i'm filming because i was um finishing more of the different fabrics that i'm using and also because for some reason my se 1900 the sewing's not wanting to work um i was struggling all evening and late night trying to fix it i even went straight to the manual and did what they requested for me to do the thing is that everything is working but the fig dogs are not advancing the fabric and it's staying in the same place. Uh, I'm sure that I'm missing something or that the computer didn't register that I am sewing. Even though on the screen it gives me all the sewing selections, I have tried everything. When I push the fabric, um, it stitches beautifully, but it's not advancing. So again, my singer to the rescue, <laughs> my little singer, that's what I'm using right now. So um, if you guys have any clue of what can it be happening, um, let me know. Maybe that happened to you and you know how to solve it. Because the machine is working. It's working with the foot. It's working without the foot automatically. All the stitching are there. It's just that the uh, feet dogs are not advancing the fabric. And that's very frustrating. So um, you know that I love my SE 1900. I have not used it for a while when it comes to sewing. So maybe I forgot to do something, but I thought I was following all the steps. I removed the arm. It went to sewing um, option. So I don't know. So anywho, this is my singer. Um, I cut more different color fabrics. I'm going to be working on that. So I might break this um, block into different sections because I also want to start some embroidering so it all depends on how long this process go i will include also embroidering but let's see how it goes let's start with this so this is what we work on the last part of the blog and all i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna sew the edges okay and then we're gonna move um to uh, apply the hardware so i'm gonna do a couple of them to give you a chance to see how i do it 
And at the end, then I'm going to bring everything that I've completed because people, it's a lot. Okay. And I have even more that I have not shown you up. Yeah, I have some more. <laughs> so I'm not going to uh, show you the whole thing because we'll be here forever. So this is one of the fabric that I added. I added this one. Um, which one I added to? I think I didn't show you this one. This is another one. But anywho, you'll see at the end. Okay, so guys, let's go at it. I'm going to run this um, fast and then some nice background music. And let's go at it, okay? Is that up to you how... Um, um, wide or how um, you want your stitching. I like it pretty close to the edge, but that is an option that you have. There's no set um, numbers, okay? So let's go, people. This machine has a threader, so sometimes I find it faster to me to just do it the regular way, but it does come with a threader. Semi-automatic. <laughs> um, yeah. This one right here is a threader. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't, depends on how I feel. <laughs> So let's finish this one because this one did not complete because I ran out of um, bobbin threads. So let me see how much did it do all the way to here. So let me complete this one. Should I take it where I left it? You can also use your clips if you are new at sewing and you are not sure if you can keep it in place. You can use the clips that I showed you before to put at the edge and then that way the fab, you will be removing once you sew it. Um, I don't need the clips to do this, um, but you know, it's a good idea also to use if you're not sure that you can keep it straight. Um, so I'm going to be doing the other side should be easier because it's just, you know, the other side. 
So let's go. First set is done right here. <laughs> I don't know where the camera is showing, so this one is done. So, guys, I'm gonna continue and that you saw how I did it, and I'm going to now switch the color of the thread again. All of them are the same length. These probably are okay because at the end I added this one and I I've already decided to make them 16 inches, so I don't need to trim these ones. These are perfect. Yeah, these are good. Okay, guys, so the next um, part is for me to um, place the hardware on them. And um, for that, I'm going to do a couple of examples because, of course, this is a lot for me to do on video. So I'm just going to pick... Um, couple of them and do them okay this glue is 6000 is what i use as a reinforcement i place a glue and let them uh, dry it up a couple of hours or maybe overnight this is just to make sure that the glue is well that's for me to uh, make sure that this is not um being pulling off with weight 
A lot of people carry a lot of keys, so this will really do the trick. This one particular is for metal um, and fabric, metal to fabric or metal. So yeah, it's gonna be good. That's the one that they suggest as the one that I'm gonna use. I didn't bring, I wanted to do a dark color on this one because I ordered some that are copper color for this dark color. So I'm gonna go ahead and look for them and I'll be right back, okay? Okay, so I have the hardware here and I have a couple of options. So these right here are the one inch keychain. Um, yeah, these are the five inch. I brought the different fabric options that I have for now. Um, yeah, so this is the hardware. I have two color hardware. This is like a darker, I would say bronze. It's very dark, it's almost like grayish bronze. And then this one is copper color. And this I have in one inch. I don't have these options on the 1.25 inches. So this right here is the regular silver color, one inch. And I'm gonna use this on the lighter color fabrics. Um, and I just realized that I don't have much left on the one inch, only like three more. So I'm gonna have to order more of the one inch. It's gonna go here like this, okay? And then this is the silver color on the 1.25 inches, which is gonna go on this one right here, on the navy blue background, which I think is gonna look good. And on the, and on the animal print, I'm gonna have the 1.25 on the silver one also as well. So definitely I have to order more of the one inch in the silver. Um, these are options that I got, um, which um, you, know, you can add on to this. Um, some people like to clip um, this onto their purses or for the mail, they like to keep it, clip it on their belt on hoop. So you can add this onto this one also. I uh, added them to the ones that I did on rhinestones and it looks pretty good. Um, let me put my glasses because I am blind without them. <laughs> When it comes to the reading, this is much better. So you know how this goes. You're just gonna place it here, right here. You see, and you can clip the thing into your bag, hope or whatever. And I think it's a good option. This is, I'm gonna add to them. And I had them in both color, copper and this. I don't have it for the darker color, but I think I can go ahead and use the copper on this one. I don't think it's gonna be much of a difference in color. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do to make my life um, simple and easy. I'm going to use my clips to help me do this. Um, some people sew this together to help them place the hardware. You can do that option too. You can sew it in here. To me, um, it saves time just to use the clips to help me do this. Um, let me just trim this. Put it uh, off of here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it together like this, and I'm gonna clip it. That way it's not gonna move when I'm placing the hardware, all right? Again, you don't have to use it um, necessarily. If you don't have the clips, you can sew this on the top. You can also use straight pins. The only thing is that this is so thick that you know it's gonna be hard to go through with the straight pins. So this to me works pretty good. Well, every time you do this, you're going to choose the side that looks prettier. To me, they both look okay for now. So I think this one is fine. So I'm going to keep it here. I'm going to trim this excess lining from here as well to make it easier for me. Okay. And I'm going to continue doing this just to get, the ready, get them ready. And I'm going to glue... All of them, I'm not gonna show the whole process for all of them, only these samples. And then we're gonna move on. Um, I need to do some embroidery of uh, uh, t-shirts. I think it's a total of five of them. Yeah, about five or six, I don't remember. <laughs> shirt um if i include it in this video i'm gonna run it in a fast mode because i don't want this video um vlog to run too long okay 
all right so this is ready so the next thing that i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get the glue let me start with this one right here the way you're gonna place the glue um, is that you are going to place it on top of here of the fabric and then you're gonna also place it on the hardware you're not gonna place it where the holes are the opening because if you place it here it's gonna ooze out you're gonna place the glue on the flat side right here not where the teeth are because uh, when you press it all the glue is gonna come out ask me how I know yeah it happened to me and it was a whole mess so make sure that you put the glue in here and that you put the glue on top of here okay and it's just a little bit you don't have to do a lot okay this is glue I cut this glue to this let me see if I can use this to help me open it okay all right so let's do this one let's make sure that I am in view because I don't want you I'm in view yeah I'm in view all right so just checking the camera to make sure that you can see what I'm doing okay and then you're gonna place it in here like this And then you place it inside, holding it in place, okay, with your two thumbs, making sure that it's aligned to the fold and the fabric, all right? You're going to hold it. And this part, you do whatever is easier for you. A lot of people do it different. To me, it's easier to hold it with my thumb in place while I get the... Um, um, I don't know how you call this. I don't know. I don't know the name, the key fob tool. <laughs> um, yeah. And then you're going to press it down. Before you press, make sure that everything is aligned again. And then you press down. This it came off, so I had to start all over again. Put it all the way in. This thing take out of the way, okay? If it's too much of a problem, you can take it off and place it back again. You can do that too. You squeeze down hard. Okay. And once you do that, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna place on the side as well. Okay, and if you notice, there's a little bit oozing in here because I place a little bit too much in this thing. So, yeah, just scoop it up. This is oozing back here too. Hopefully, I'm gonna be able to clean it up because I don't want to mess my floor up. All right, so that's done, and I'm gonna let this um, dry for a while. So when I come back, it's not gonna be right away. I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to come at the end when all of them are done. Okay. This is so pretty. Look, people. I love the combination of this and this fabric. This fabric was um, a quarter, a, those little quarter samples that they sell for um, quilting. So I bought two of them and I went back to Walmart and they didn't have any more. So. I love that. So, yeah. Yeah, so for the next one, I'm going to make sure that I don't use too much glue because I'm going to have to clean this up. You see how it's a little bit of glue in there? I don't want to mess with it right now because um, it's not dry enough yet. So I'm going to keep it here to be um, to dry up. Okay. And that is the way it goes. Um, let's do the next one. Just a little bit. This time I'm not going to go crazy. If 
Again, you don't have to do the glue. That's optional. I decided to do it because they suggest for you to do it if you want the fuck to not come apart if you put too much um, keys on it or heavy stuff on it. Okay, that's why I do it. Oh, the copper looks amazing. Love the way the copper looks, definitely. Okay, you do the corners, and this is perfect. This copper looks amazing. Look at that. How beautiful. I wish I could get more of this fabric, I'm telling you. It'll be like a blessing if I find it again. Um, and then I'm going to continue, guys. See you when I'm done at the end, okay? These are the first one that I finished that I wanted to show you. I still have to clean the hardware of extra little glue that came on top of it. That's easy to clean with um, glue gun that I used to um, clean my hoops when I used the um, temporary adhesive spray. So this is the next day and I'm going to be starting doing the embroidery. It's going to be run in fast mode and I'm going to be explaining step by step what's going on. So let's get started. I'm using poly mesh um, cutaway stabilizer with the tearaway stabilizer for this shirt. And I'm using my Ricoma original hoop, the 8 by 12 because it gives me a little bit more height than what the um, 8 by 13 Mighty Hoop um, offered me for this case. This design is a little bit taller. And I'm also using temporary adhesive spray so that I can uh, adhere the stabilizers on the shirt. Um, to get it ready for hooping. And after this, what I'm going to be doing is going to the machine to get it embroidered, okay? If you have any question on how to use this hoop, let me know down below. This is just um, similar to the original hoop for single needles embroidery machine. Of course, the Mighty Hoop are faster and they're easier. So, of course, I'm most of the time use my Mighty Hoop. But on this instance, I um, decided to use my Ricoma hoop, all right? So, guys, I'm going to play some nice background music and let you see the action, okay? See you when I'm done, and I'm going to show you the shirt plus all the key fob that I finished, all right? <music> Thank you. 
of the vlog and I just want to tell you I'm sorry that I needed to run the embroidery part in a fast mode because this vlog has become a little bit longer than what I usually do. Um, yeah, so anywho, this is the uh, result. I want to show you the fobs. These are the ones that I have completed so far and I know that I need to add a little bit more to it but so far this is what I have and I'm going to give you a sample of, of each one of the different fabric that I, I use. Here, this is the uh, one that is 1.25, which is the wider one. These two, these three, and these are the ones that I use that is um, the one inch size for one, 1.25 and one inch for, and these are the different kind. Most of them are 16 inches long. I did this one and I'm going to offer them just to see if people like um, the shorter ones. Um, but like I said, um, I'm not going to plan to do a whole bunch because this is going to be a first time thing and I want to make sure that these fabrics are popular and they're going to sell. So I'm going to experiment with these ones at first and if I see they like them, then I will keep doing them. And for those who did not see the one video that I did about um, Huffy Rhinestone, which uh, I included the fob in Rhinestone, this is a sample of the ones that I did. On that video um, if you have not seen the video you can check that video out and yeah this is the one right here already in the little package that I plan to um, place them this is a little bit shorter this is uh, 11 inches in length so it's actually about 10 point about 5.5 inches and I like this length that's why I decided to do something similar just to see but yeah so let me show you the shirt and the shirt came amazing. I still have to do five more of them. Um, the same, same design. Um, it's a design that takes a little bit uh, long to embroider. I didn't know it was gonna be so um, long, so long, the process, especially this part right here. It takes a long time, but it came out amazing. I just love this one. Um, I don't even mention, I got this file from um, Creative Fabrica, okay? in case you are interested on it, all right? So let me see what else. Oh, my baby is back. My SE 1900 embroidery machine is back. It's working. Um, you will be surprised of what the issue was. So I decided um, to write a help note on one of the Facebook groups that I follow, um, asking for help. And right away, it was late at night. Uh, it was very late at night. Um, and the person who helped me got it correct right away. I did do what he asked me to do. And listen, listen how simple it was. I have not used this machine for sewing for a long time. So on my defense, I forgot about it. When you're going to be using the SE 1900, which is the combo machine, sewing and embroidery, and you're going to use the sewing part, you have to remember to go here in the back of the machine. There is a switch right here. Let me see, I don't know if you want to have a good view. A switch right here that you have to move to your right um, to lift up the, the feed dog. I always have a hard time to say the name correctly. I think it's feed dogs. I don't know, or dog feed, I don't know. But you know what I, what I mean? It's a little um, metal part that move around that help advance the fabric. So it was on the uh, embroidery setting. So I needed to do this and I completely forgot about it and I feel so dumb. I, I feel so dumb because I should know better. But anyway, my baby is back and I am happy. So now I can use it for sewing as well. But like I said, my singer came to the rescue and I used them, the singer machine to do all of this, all right? So this is everything for now. If you're new to my channel and you like this content, Go ahead and subscribe to my channel, The Crafty Puerto Rican, and hit that notification bell. That way, you're going to get notified of all my future videos, all right? Guys, this is everything for now. Until next time, bye. Hasta luego.